All right, so it is a beautiful sunny day and uh, this is probably my absolute favorite situation to photograph my work. However, I wanted to show you this uh, common mistake that people make. Uh, notice all of the dappled light and shadows and hot spots on this thing. Like, it's pretty crazy. Don't pay attention to the weed whacking I need to do. Okay, um, stay focused there. Um, but uh, yeah, don't do that because uh, what you want to look for is, first off, even light. The most even you can. And there's a couple really good situations. And I'm going to walk over here and show you. So this, for me, is ideal pretty much. Uh, I wish it was a little bit earlier in the day. Uh, it started, the light's getting a little bit warm, but it's nothing I couldn't fix in uh, just a regular, you know, just adjust that a little bit in, in any sort of photo editing, just what's on my phone. And it's a shaded wall, and uh, I also have a, the, that piece I was showing you before, and it has no glare and nothing on it. Uh, I'm using, I uh, used uh, clothespins to just kind of, it's on watercolor block. And a lot of times uh, I like to use watercolor blocks because uh, they're just really sturdy and wonderful. And I'll make a point of leaving those on until I have to ha take them off. Uh, and uh, no glare, no nothing. It's just so easy. It's so fun. And then click, 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 we're done. And I can crop out the clothespins because that is not a part of the art. It could be, but not for this purpose. <laughs> All right, on to the next. So. What I did is I have this centered, you know, against the wall so that it's roughly, you know, equal in terms of light and shadow. I don't have it like over there because there's a lot more variation in the light. Um, it's as consistent as I can get it. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of, that I took with it and talk a little bit about some of the problems I had with them. Um, but in a nutshell, it wasn't bad, but I noticed that there was a little bit of glare, especially down where the cabbage is, and I really didn't like that. So uh, I came up with uh, a couple of other interventions for this situation. So this is my very <laughs> low-tech solution here, and uh, one of the things I did was I used a bungee cord and just kind of and a little hook in the wall, and uh, and then just yeah, very very low-tech, and then just uh, <laughs> used that to get uh, hooked it on there so that now the uh, the sign is angling down uh, a bit. To help minimize that. The other thing I did was uh, I put, I have this black velvet cloth and what that does is it absorbs the light that it was bouncing off the ground and then back up onto, onto the piece. And so um, that helped. It helped. But I don't feel, I was still not quite happy with the solution, final solution. The other thing that I noticed was that the top of the frame, and this was a total surprise, was uh, turning <laughs> this like light cyan blue when it's really like a mid-tone cerulean blue. Um, and it, it looks like I did this gradient on it. And it's all because of how the light is catching the top of the frame. And it's, <laughs> but really it's all the same blue. <laughs> But it doesn't look like that, and that's not something uh, that would be acceptable for submitting your work if you want to give an accurate representation of what it looks like. Even though it's just the frame, uh, to me it's significant enough that I feel like somebody might be disappointed so, uh, or surprised. Um, so that's just something to think about. So I'm going to show you the next thing that I came up with. Okay, so I was okay with what I got, the results I got with the shaded wall, but I felt like there was still some glare and still kind of playing around with it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try bringing my piece inside the shop. And <laughs> it's funny because this is, so here we go. 
and uh, there it is. And uh, I, I absolutely adore, there's all these vintage tractors around Nash's. Um, and I thought, well, I'm, I know, I'm gonna lean my, my sign against this tractor because that's, that's fun for me. Um, and it was kind of cool being in the shed because there are these doors and uh, I can't really get too far back because of this truck in the way. Um, but there are these doors that I can kind of adjust a little bit with the, the lighting conditions. And so I was able to kind of pull them in a little bit and, you know, and I decided this is about where I, I liked it for the evenness. But what I don't like is the top of the painting or the sign is like this weird cyan bright and then down below that the along the bottom of the frame that's actually pretty much the real true color but because of the way the light's falling it looks like i've done this gradient effect and um, i don't want that because if i was to submit this for uh in theory for like a show or something and depending on the people they might be like when they got it they'd be like what's wait this isn't what we ordered it was supposed to be a gradient on top and this is not you know, and you don't want to have that moment. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I just didn't, you know, no, no. So what I'm going to do to try to compensate for that is two things is I'm going to use a bungee cord to <laughs> hook my painting to the tractor. Uh, the tractor is like, what? And then I'm also going to use this black cloth uh, and I'm going to sort of drape it up above here and we'll go from there. All right, so I spent a little time uh, bungeeing uh, my painting to, or the, the sign to the, uh, the tractor and uh, also hanging up the, uh, the black velvet. And I'm gonna, I was, I'm gonna show you the results that I got with that. Um, so what I ran into was I was not happy with the what I would call the cyan effect um, and uh, that it's still not good enough it's, it's a little bit better and I can kind of hit hit the uh, hit the top of the frame and it's also very hard to get back far enough uh, I can actually and I can also do the thing where I angle you know making sure that I angle my phone more and all that kind of stuff but it just does not feel right and that cyan effect is not great. I'm not, just not loving this. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through now what was the final solution. All right, so this is my final solution. And I just wanna encourage you, you have to play around to figure out what works because everybody's setup is different. Not everybody lives on a farm. So what I did is I brought this sign into the shop because I was like, you know what? this seems like the best setup but there's two very bright windows coming through i'm like hmm and what i noticed and, and i set it up over here thinking like this seems like the most or you know in this corner ish it was the most even light and i figured i can kind of compensate for that window behind it but watch this because this is kind of cool here is when i have the I noticed there was a hot spot happening that was dire directly related to the light coming in from this window right and so and you can see uh, there's just this like little hot spot glare you know kind of around where it says organic food for local folks right so knowing that no I all I did was I covered it up with this uh, black velvet cloth and hot spot gone, which was awesome. So you can kind of see that in reverse. So hold on. And so as soon as I, I just laid this black velvet cloth uh, on the ground, which was slightly painful because it is very dirty, but at least it's washable. So I'm gonna be like, okay, fine, we'll wash it later. Um, and my hot spot is gone. And what I had to do too was uh, 
you know, I was using the the square frame on this and um, let me back up a little bit and you see the lights coming in through the window, but to compensate for that, I just got closer and I just hit the top of the of the picture on my camera phone and that helped to compensate for that light difference coming in there and it really did a great job on it. And I got a bit closer doing using the square frame uh, to, so that the whole shop is not included in the in the artwork. Um, you know, just like I said in the first video, you know, you want to get pretty as close as you can, but also allow yourself a little bit of room for cropping it out. Um, the other thing that I did was I decided to have the painting leaning slightly forward. Um, and to do that, now talk about low tech here. So I'm using a bungee cord, which I have rather, you know, and frankly, I would not do something this preca precarious with something that was under glass, all right? Um, I would do something that was much more, I'd get out my screw, screws and my, and make sure that was happening. And then I did this to like push it forward. Tomorrow the guys are gonna be like, Bliss was probably in the shop. No, I'm going to put everything back um, <laughs> they'll, and they'll never know unless they uh, watch this video. So any rate, I just want to encourage you guys, uh, you know, hang in there, you know, really hold out, find, find out what's like, look around your place for what's the best setup, what you can do, um, you know, what you can be, start to become aware of like all the different lighting situations that you have. Many people have maybe not shops that look like this, which I think is actually really awesome. But um, you know, many of you have garages and things that you could you could replicate this with a garage really easily. So thank you so much for watching, and I really appreciate it. And um, art on. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, seeing what everybody does for the member show.